Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, for years now, Google has been photographing and buying photographs of the Earth's surface taken from space and uploading them online as part of its Google Earth program. Images of the United States are regularly updated, quite frequently, with one major exception. For at least eight years, images of the Tonopah test range in Nevada have gone without an update. It's almost as if Google is helping the government hide something. If they were hiding something, what might it be? Nick Pope is a journalist. He spent many years investigating UFO sightings for the British government. He joins us tonight. Nick, thanks very much for coming on. So did, did I state those facts correctly? There is, out of the entire continental United States, one area that is not updated regularly on Google Earth, and it's this test facility maintained by the U.S. government. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. It is very close to the infamous Area 51, which is, of course, where UFO enthusiasts say that whatever it was that crashed at Roswell in 1947 was taken. The Tonopah test range uh, is, is about 70 miles away from Area 51. And again, it is one of the most secret places on the face of the planet. UFO enthusiasts and the conspiracy community say that's where the aliens are, that's where the UFOs that we're trying to develop are being test flown. Aviation enthusiasts say, no, it's simply a site where the next generation of prototype aircraft, drones, and perhaps hypersonic weapons are tested. But there was a blind spot for years. Is there any evidence that the first camp is right or on to something? Is there any evidence that the U.S. government does have knowledge of UFOs that hasn't been shared with the public? Well, this all ties back to these recent revelations about the Pentagon's UFO program. And these, these whole, the, the rumors about Area 51 and crashed UFOs and, and trying to put some of this together and fly it ourselves, those rumors had gone away. But then we, we had the story about the Pentagon's program. We saw, of course, those videos of the Navy jets chasing the UFOs, and we now have some of the people involved in that program speaking out and saying, yes, there were these unknowns in our airspace. So it's not just aircraft lights and weather balloons. Interesting. Is there any, any indication of what it is then, if it's not just aircraft lights and weather balloons? Well, we don't know, and the whole trouble with this, and this, this really links these two stories of the Tonopah test range and the Pentagon program, there has been this blurring of the lines, even the, the phraseology. The Pentagon's project was called Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. So as I say, you've got this, this uh, blurring of the lines between what is just our cutting-edge technology, and what really might be, if some of these rumors are true, from somewhere else. What's so confusing, and of course, I think that DOD, the Pentagon, has every right, and in fact, an obligation to keep projects it's working on secret. But it's not clear why so much material, so many documents from 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, would remain classified to this day. What could be the explanation for that? Well, first of all, I absolutely agree with you on secrecy. I mean, I'm not calling for this to be opened up, even though a couple of more recent photos have now been put on Google Earth. Uh, but everything you put out there, of course, the Russians can see it, the Chinese can see right. it, everyone can see it. So we need to be mindful of that. I, I don't know what is out there. And I think the good news is that finally we're getting some U.S. Congress interest in this. The Senate Armed Services Committee are now looking into those Navy videos that we've seen and discussed. And the right. House Armed Services Committee, they're looking at the Pentagon's program to say, what did we get for our taxpayers' dollars here? Last question. Do you think the president and maybe some committee chairman would have knowledge of this? They have a right to know. Do you think they do know the answers? Well, again, the rumors are that this is what the Space Force is all about, but I, I'm not so sure about that. I think the president would have to know, and, and in his capacity, of course, as commander-in-chief. So uh, I, I hope that there are some interesting secrets, whether or not they come out over the next few months, if we get formal congressional hearings on this, right. as opposed to just congressional interest. We'll wait and see.
Yeah. Well, there are definitely interesting secrets out there. The question, the question is, will we find out what they are? <laughs> Nick Pope, I know you will find out first, and I hope you'll tell us on the show. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the prince of the power of the air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. 
The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.